Hey guys, Chris here from Kite Republic, here to talk through everything Core GTS with Josh Emanuel, Mega Loop Beast. Mate, this is obviously your weapon of choice when you're out there sure. for most of your riding. Can you tell us, GTS, who is it for? Um, so yeah, for me the GTS is a kite that's for people that are looking for something that's got power, it's explosive, um, it's got good drive in it. So if you're looking for a kite that can perform in <coughs> harsh conditions, if you're looking for a kite that can do freestyle, throw loops, this is, this is your choice of kite. Um, it's a kite that you can start your basic kite loops with and move into your extreme short line loops or standard 20 meter line loops where you get your kite super low and you got the trust in the kite coming up. Uh, for me, yeah, this kite is a kite for someone that's looking to get into loops. If you're starting your loops, um, you don't necessarily have to be an advanced pro rider <coughs> to be moving on the GTS or riding the GTS. You could be sort of just getting your first decent jumps down and you know, that's where yeah. you, you know, when you start getting your first five to 10 meter jumps, maybe if you have that thrill and you want to go for it that's mm -hmm. this would be your kite even if you're doing your standard five to ten meter jumps this would i would say would be your kite to to start your loops with okay perfect and what is it how how have core managed to get a kite that performs that climbs that that sort of has that that sea kite performance but then have it friendly enough for a lot of riders to be able to use. Yeah, so for me, <clears throat> talking about that, I mean, obviously it's not a full C kite, it's the future C. Yep. Um, adding <clears throat> the bridle system to it also just allows for the kite to climb a lot quicker, a lot more trust in the kite. Yep. Um, moving to something else that can also help play around quite a bit are the settings on the kite. Yep. Um, so you got CIT points um, yeah. on the bottom over here. I might actually just flip this up behind us here so we yep. can talk through that. So if you have a look <clears throat> on the bottom here, we have three different settings. Uh, you have your freestyle, wave, and all round. So <laughs> yeah, for me, I generally will be shifting this to the freestyle mode. Um, I, t I tend to like quite a bit of, well, not a lot of bar pressure, but more than the standard bar pressure that the kite gives you. Yep. Um, so if you, so with just talking about <clears throat> the settings, so you've got your your wave set, or sorry, your freestyle wave at the top and freestyle at the bottom and on your on your wave it's going to make it a little bit lighter yeah so it's not going to be as harsh feeling mm -hmm. and on your freestyle mode it sort of gives you that more c-shaped feeling yeah so it sort um, of closes the shape of the canopy correct. a little bit again also on the wingtips we have the same thing from wave to freestyle and all around yep on my nine i tend to keep it on either standard or wave okay. um, i don't like to increase the bar pressure too high on my nine on my eight I have them both set to freestyle, so I increase yep. the bar pressure. In a sense, it also slightly slows your kite down, mm -hmm. so it's not as fast going through your loops. Yep. And for me, an eight meters, it's a small class. For me, a classified as a small kite. Yeah. Um, so it's really quick in my hands. For me, I also then ride <coughs> a wake style bar because, mm -hmm. again, a smaller bar creates slightly slower loops. Yeah. Um, so yeah, for me. Smaller kites, I like to push it all to freestyle so that you know you have more of a direct feeling, slightly a bit more bar pressure. Um, and then on my eight, I like to decrease that bar pressure, just or sorry, increase slightly. Um, yeah, whereas with a nine, balance it out a little bit Slow with the bigger little. sizes. Perfect. So if we're considering that, and I know a lot of people, it comes out of the box sort of in that in that mid setting, um, which is your, your all round setting. And so would you say for somebody that's that's going to jump onto a GTS that's in that, you know, maybe early kite loop time or starting to think about top kite loops, you know, I'm, I'm assuming you'd be recommending people around that sort of seven, eight, nine, yeah. in that sort of me, lower to mid. An eight's my favorite kite pretty much for everything. Yep. Um, whether it's waves, uh, jumping or looping, mm -hmm. eight is my, my choice of kite. It's, it's super quick. It's always got a good recovery. Yeah. So yeah, an eight meter is definitely your best to start with. And all depends on your background of what you, if you've always been on a GTS then, and if you've always left it on standard, yep. try playing mm -hmm. around. If you want a slightly bit more bar pressure, slightly less bar pressure, play with your settings. Yep. Um, but if you've come from a background on a different kite and now you move to the GTS, 
And you need to think, <clears throat> if you get onto this kite now and you're like, ah, oh, just, I can't feel the kite. Yeah. You've obviously come from a kite that has and more bar pressure. Yep. So if you want that same feeling of the kite you had previously, plus the, the performance of this kite, adjust the settings. That's why they've yep. been put on the kite. And as far as, I mean, it's a feel and a personal thing that we're after, but as far as the kite, I think most people starting kite loops are worried about the kite catching them and the kite climbing and getting back up there to be able to actually slow them down again yep. and the rest. Will it you know, do a massive amount to that by changing this or is it more about the actual feedback you're getting on that, on more, that journey? More on the feedback the, on the journey of the kite. Yep. Um, I've never really felt <clears> that it's decreased my speed of climbing yep. uh, or anything like that. For me, it's more about the feel of the kite. Feel you like. And slight, obviously, like I said, performance does play a part as it might slow your loop down slightly Yep. Um, or increase the speed of it. But for me, it's more about the feel of the kite. Yep, that makes a lot of sense. I think if you, if you hear the word kite loop and you're uh, talking to kiters and think, they're thinking about, oh, I want to get into more kite loops, what will I do, what kites? I mean, GTS is just the name that just constantly comes yep. up and, and the rest. So can you tell me a little bit, obviously the, um, the Nexus, very good kite for kite looping as well. Yep. GTS is the one that in general, everyone's always talked about as the kite loop machine. If we think about those two kites as far as going through a loop, and then as far as what would be an easier kite to learn to kite loop with and to progress your kite loops in that sense. Can you just talk through that a little bit? Yeah, so for me, I've actually just been riding the Nexus quite a bit recently. I decided <clears> to <throat> change over from a 10 GTS to a 10 Nexus. Yep. Um, for me, the Nexus also still has a bit of power and grunt through the kite loops. It's mm -hmm. not as aggressive as this kite and it's not as explosive. Yep. So for me, my rotations and stuff, I kind of prefer with the GTS because yeah. it gets you way more inverted. There's way more yank. Absolutely. Um, so that's what I kind of liked. With what I found with the new Nexus is it's got a lot more lift and float than the GTS. So it has, you have a bit more hang time where I find now when you come down from your kite loops and yep. you throw that first safety loop or down loop, yeah. it actually picks you up a lot more than the GTS does. Okay. So the GTS still has a good recovery and it still gives you that lift yep. that you need for your landings. But I just found on the Nexus, it has a bit more. So yeah. for me, you could either start, I mean, if you're starting off GTS or Nexus is going to work for you. Um, yeah. It just depends what you what you really want in the end. And so from what you're saying there and from what I've gathered from those you know, few words there, the GTS is going to give you that consequence and give you that real feeling of, yeah. you know, being Mac 10 that way before it catches you. Correct. The Nexus is still going to give you a lot of that, but the, the, the lift is going to be a lot more, so room for error on the landing is probably, probably bigger. Better. So well, room for error could be better because you're gonna have slightly more hang time, yeah. which <coughs> can then obviously give you more options of am I landing this way or am I landing this yes, way. Yes, absolutely. Um, so yeah, I mean, it has a bit more float, uh, not as aggressive <coughs> and powerful loops, but still has that tendency of a mega loop power or kite loop power. Yep. So that you know you've almost pulled the kite loop where some kites yeah. I find, you know, you loop it but you don't actually really have that forward pull. Yes. The kite sort of just it turns sort of through catches the window you and sort of it thing and sort of catches yeah. you. Yeah. So the GTS is basically going to be that one that's turning from very wide and giving a full like rotor Great. through it. Yeah, sweet. Okay, and I'm going to ask you a few tips for everyone in a couple of seconds about sure. the uh, on the kite loops and getting into them. But before I do, um, not your normal talking through this kite question but who is this kite not for and what recommended recommendations might you have for people thinking GTS like who, who would you maybe go a different direction for um, for sure people starting out in the sport uh, <coughs> it's not a beginner's yep. kite um, mm -hmm. it's it's got too much power for for a beginner so yep. you know the mistakes if you make mistakes with this kite you tend to feel it a lot more than you would with the with the Nexus, basically, let's say. Yep. It's, it's a, Nexus is a lot more forgiving than the GTS, where, mm -hmm. you know, this kite's got a lot more grunts, a lot more power. So for people that are starting out in the sport, yep. for sure, like, it's not for you. I'm not saying you can't use it. Yeah. But ideally, I would suggest you going on something mm -hmm. more suitable for a beginner. So say mm -hmm. the Nexus uh, would be my, my go-to for someone that's starting out. Yep. Um, I'm currently setting up my whole school with Nexus. So yeah, cool. Um, for me, it's the kite or, I mean, the section's also a great teaching kite, but mm -hmm. it's more orientated to waves. So yeah. it has a lot less power. Um, it's a very forgiving kite. Yep. Uh, so it's also, it's not a bad kite for a beginner to start out on. 
Yeah, cool. All right, and um, I've had this question before. I, uh, I want to get in the air, I want to stay in the air as long as I possibly can, and I just want my jumps to be easier so I get them right every single time. Yep. Is, is the GTS the right kite for me? I get this a little bit. For, and, for uh, straight hang time, no. Yeah. XR is the way to go. Yep. I mean, if we look at the stats, the stats tend to show oh, yeah, us I've, that I've, the GTS is, is a good jumping kite, but it's majority to the loops. Yep. Look at our XR, it's currently holding the top five or six spots on yeah, the world's highest jumps. Absolutely crazy, that stat. Um, yeah. Which I think is, it's, it's an amazing product, and also yeah. I think it's just showing in results as well. Yep. Um, so yeah, for straight up hang time, if you're looking for a kite to cruise and boost and you know, you want to have those long floaty lofty jumps, yep. XR6 is your weapon of choice. Yeah. Um, but if you're looking for a combination of good loops you know and that. a decent amount of hang time, I'd say the GTS is probably yep. your next best bet. Perfect. I think very good advice and, uh, and the rest there. Um, before we wrap it up, all right, someone comes to you. I jump really well. I can jump, you know, 10 meters consistently. I feel confident. I get my landings good. I want to do kite loops. Am I ready? Can you possibly talk us through how would you get someone to start their kite loops and, uh, and sure. start nailing those first few good catches? Yeah, so for me, key thing is making sure that you are comfortable with your down loops. Mm -hmm. um, whether it be to the right or mm -hmm. to the left, you can always, in a sense, you can choose the side that you're going to have to perform the down loop to land. Yep. It all depends on your kite position after the loop or even a jump. Yep. Uh, so obviously if your kite's on the left hand side of the window, you're going to want to pull it to the right so that it sort of comes behind you yes. and that's what's going to slow you down and give you that little bit of uplift that you need before you land. Yep. If your kite mm -hmm. were on the left and you were to perform it to the left, yeah. basically your kite's now not traveling behind you. So it's not acting as if a handbrake or something to slow you down coming Makes into your jumps. It's going to create more speed, more power because your loop's now moving in the front half yep. of your window, which is obviously, so that's like that if hard you were to flat. dive your kite, it's gonna pull you forward. Mm -hmm. So correct, as you're saying, it's gonna bring you in hard and it's gonna bring you in fast. Yep. So always know, make, a sh make yourself aware of which side of the window mm. your kite's on. Yep. Moving for the kite loops, um, the most important thing is when you pull that kite loop and where your kite is when you pull it. Yep. So like I said, if you're comfortable doing five to 10, 15 meter jumps, and you're pretty good with your down loops for sure. You're ready to attempt your first kite loop if you haven't. Let's have a video camera ready. For sure, always. <laughs> the first one must always be filmed because the <laughs> tendency to guys make mistakes is pretty high. I mean, two days ago we had a little bit of a clinic type thing with all the dealers here. Yep. And for sure there were some big splashes coming <laughs> from the boys and like I jump back up and you're like, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, cool, let's try again. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> Don't do this. <laughs> nice. Um, so yeah, I mean, if, you, if you're performing and you're getting those comfortable down loops, for me, the most important thing is when you pull the trigger for that yep. loop. And there's obviously three stages or three points which you can pull it going up still. Yep. At just before the peak of your jump mm -hmm. and after the peak of your jump. And the effects of all three of those are completely different. Mm -hmm. So pulling it too soon, you're going to get a lot more pull out of your kite because you still have a lot of resistance between you and your kite. Yes. And that's going to give you quite a hectic forward pull. Yep. Pulling mm -hmm. it at the top or just before the top is when you want to be aiming to do it. Before the top, preferably, because mm -hmm. once you hit the top, you've now hit a point of almost no feel, no pull from your kite because mm. you've now reached the it's that peak. weightlessness moment. Correct. So you've hit that moment of where you actually can't go higher and the only option mm. is to now go down, which means you're now recreating the opposite type of pull. So when you're going yep. up, the kite's pulling up, and now you're sort of pulling the kite down. Yep. So pulling it just before the top is when you want to do it because that's your last moment of connection, true connection to the kite. Yes. And that's what's <clears> going to still allow the kite to really drive well through the window. Yep. And pulling it after your peak of your jump yeah. is also not so great because now you're already traveling down. Yeah. So you're going to perform a loop when you already have a downward movement. Yep. Which again, is going to pull you forward maybe ever so slightly because you actually <coughs> don't have that correct or direct feeling to your kite. Yep. So it's also not the ideal time to be pulling a loop. So for you guys wanting to start out, um, make sure your kite's at 12 o'clock. Don't let it <coughs> drift too far to the right and then try pull the loop. Yep. Um, so yeah, make sure your kite's at 12 just before the peak of your jump. 
nice hard solid right or it depends just where you want to go left or right yep but make mm -hmm. sure you bring your bar in all the way don't mm -hmm. have your bar halfway out because you full commitment gonna, and yeah, make sure it make gets sure you around fully commit, get your bar all the way in for me rather kind of oversteer than mm -hmm. understeer because the consequences of understeering is way worse than oversteering yeah. a kite at least if you oversteer it your kite's already you're up. gonna get caught so yeah your kite will catch <laughs> you at least if you oversteer it and yeah you know, if you have time you can count to correct that on the way down and steer it maybe back slightly to 12 and then get ready for your down loop yeah yeah and again coming back to the down loops when you complete that loop if your kite you've slightly understeered which i tend to do for a lot of my loops that i know that i'll perform it to the right yeah because a lot of the time i actually don't have my left hand on the bar so yeah. you actually don't have a choice but to loop it to the uh, down loop it to the right whichever hands on there is going to be the one yeah so yeah. take it on that and <coughs> if you yeah. if you oversteer your kite and it comes up to the right you know you can perform your down loop to the left and vice versa Perfect. So, uh, boys and girls, we expect some big kite loops out there this year. We expect uh, some of Josh's tips to, to hopefully keep you in very good stead and get you psyched for this. Josh Manuel, thank Thanks you very so much. much for uh, spending the time and giving no us worries. the tips through the kite. Check out the GTS. And, uh, guys, if you want to demo anything core, hit us up, kiterepublic.com.au, and uh, we will get you out there on the water. Cheers. Well. I'm going to start that again because that was going to be dodgy as, but we'll go one more time. Huh? <laughs> cool, cool. <laughs> Take two. Take two.